big as is Kevin. We have ET8550 member here. Then we have 15,000 member here. In previous video, I showed you how to test those capacitors. I'll put the link to the video above. Just for a short recap, the capacitance of those capacitors go down in time. For example, if we have a 220 microfarads, and your ESR reading should be below 0.1. If you have a multimeter, you can only do the DC test, which is like this. If your capacitor is shorted, and you're going to hear the beep. With a ESR meter, you can further test. For example, if it's 220, you should be below 0.2. So this one reads 0.1. And if we look at 220 microfarads, and this is good capacitor. If you suspect it's bad, how you're going to replace them and you have to find out what kind of capacitor it is the black side is the negative and the silver side is positive take a picture of the main board or just remember the negative is always connected to the ground if you put a multimeter between this and the ground it should beep cd is the model number this is cd and that one is cd and this little one is also CD, although it's smaller. 220 is the capacitance, and that means 220 microfarads. And this H represents the voltage. And for a lookup chart, we can go to bchtechnology.com and search for 220. There's 220C, 220H, and 220A. And for the second picture, it's going to show you a chart of the voltage. So. 220A means uh, 10 volts, and uh, 220C means 16 volts. The one we saw is 220H. That means that one can go 50 volts. This line is the batch number. Uh, that's when they made this capacitor. And then there's a logo here, and the smaller one doesn't have a logo. Okay, I just covered how to test and find the replacement parts. And now Abby is going to show you how to take it off. Hey guys, it's Abby here. I'm going to be showing you how to take off this SMD aluminum capacitor. I saw a couple versions of how people do this, but this is the way I find easiest. Um, it requires just one soldering iron, and uh, I saw some people use two soldering irons to take this off, but not everyone has two. So this is the way I find easiest, requiring just one soldering iron. First, I drop down a good amount of lead onto one of the legs. Then I'm going to turn my main board sideways so I have that leg facing me with all the lead. Then I take some tweezers, give it a good little click to make sure they work. And then I'm going to hold on to my capacitor and warm back up the lead that I dropped. And as I'm going to start slowly tipping back the capacitor towards the leg that has no lead drop down on it. This is going to release that first leg that I'm working on here. And it slowly starts to raise up and then all of a sudden you'll see it, that leg pop off. But I'll still be attached by that leg in the back. So I saw some people use this with two soldering irons. Some people said that you could grab the capacitor, twist clockwise, and it would come off. I tried that a couple times, but it ripped my board, and I didn't like that. So I'm scrapping some pieces from this board. Now, now that I have that this leg is up, instead of turning it around and working from another direction, I found it easiest to just maintain this direction and use my soldering iron to work under the capacitor and release the other leg. I didn't drop any lead down or anything. I'm just heating up what is already there to release that leg and you'll see that it just pops off eventually as you're slowly working. So again, I found this to be the easiest way where I really didn't heat up too much of that black bottom base. That black bottom base is just plastic so any extreme heat is going to burn it and that black base technically you do not have to have it it just helps create any resistance from vibrating on the board here's what i was talking about from ripping the board if you turn clockwise Alrighty, everybody we hope that you enjoyed this video you can visit us at bchtechnologies.com or you can visit us locally here in greensboro north carolina 
happy printing everyone.